and here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Victor Herbert's enchanting operetta, The Princess Pat, starring Gordon McRae and his two lovely guest stars, Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another big musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight we have an abundance of good things. Two lovely guest stars from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten, and from the nation's airwaves, Lucille Norman, and from the pen of Victor Herbert, a memorable score. Here's the Princess Pat. That music make you think of Neapolitan nights, the Isle of Capri, sunsets at Sorrento, Vesuvius rising like a proud giant over the blue waters of the Mediterranean? Well, that's where my palace was, in the Bay of Naples. My name is Prince Antonio di Montalvo. When you get to know me better, you can call me Toto. But I left the Bay of Naples to follow a lovely Irish girl halfway around the world, a girl named Pat. And when she finally married me, all her friends in Long Island called her Princess. The Princess Pat. Oh, Pat, it's so strange to think that you're a princess. Why, it's no different from being Mrs. Jones or Mrs. Smith. Any woman who's in love with her husband is a princess, Grace. That's a happiness I'll never know, Pat. They're making me marry a funny old man named Mr. Schmaltz. That's awful. What's he like? Oh, he hasn't got anything at all. Except a million dollars. Don't marry him. I have to. My father has lost all his money. Oh. It's the only way I can help. The strange part is that I'm in love with Mr. Schmaltz's son, Tony. But he won't have a cent if he marries without his father's permission. Take my advice, Grace. Grab Tony, money or no money. Why, I wouldn't have cared if my husband were a prince. For a street cleaner, I love him, and that's all that counts. It's in content. Life is but a jest. Half the time we lost it all. I'm so seek to be guided with a merry smile.
my beautiful wife and a beautiful little friend. How are you enjoying America, Prince? It's wonderful. Every girl here is almost as lovely as my wife. This Long Island is surrounded by water, so I should like to be continually surrounded by such beauty. I wish I was an island in an ocean of girls Surrounded by them far as I could see And like the little waves that play That kiss the shore and run away So I should like to have them play with me Just one and then another comes a-slipping along A creamy white kiss in your arms she curls as with one sudden fond embrace, he splashes kisses on your face. Oh, for an island, what a place! An ocean full of girls. I wish there was an island in an ocean of girls, surrounded by them far as I can see. And like the little waves that play, that kiss the shore and run away, so I would like to have them play with me. Just one and then another comes a sleeping along, a creamy white within your arms she curls. As with one sudden fond embrace, she splashes kisses on your face. Oh, for an island, what a place, an ocean for. Wet. That's all, my darling. Toto, Toto. Isn't that awful, Grace? My husband has an eye for every pretty girl in Long Island. Men are all alike. Except, of course, Tony. Well, Grace, I'm going to teach my husband a lesson and do a little flirting myself. <gasps> Pat, if you're going to flirt with anybody, why not Mr. Schmaltz? You could make Toto jealous and at the same time keep me from marrying that awful millionaire. I'll do it, Grace. There is everybody. There is anybody. Everywhere I look, I find nobody. <laughs> That's Mr. Schmaltz. Oh, there. Oh, hello, Pookchen. <laughs> Mr. Schmaltz, I'd like to present the Princess Pat. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Schmaltz. Isn't she lovely, Mr. Schmaltz? Oh, well, I tell you, the women are my strongest weakness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told you're a leader of men, a captain of industry, a giant of commerce. I'm loaded. <laughs> You've heard of Schmalz's upper Bavarian chicken fat, ain't you? Mm -hmm. A household word. Schmalz's chicken fat is perfect for shining your shoes, <laughs> frying your schnitzel, <laughs> or the polishing the furniture. And making a million dollars. <laughs> Our other specialty is goose grease. Use the grease geese. I'll geese cry for that. <laughs> Mr. Schmaltz. I have a question to ask you. Yeah? How would you like to be an island in an ocean of girls? Bring on the waves. <laughs> then let's go for a little walk, Mr. Schmaltz. In the forest where it's shady and romantic. Hmm, imagine this. A princess on the arm of the chicken fat king. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's fantastic. We'll see you later, Grace. I think it's going to work. Caramia! Caramia! Oh, Grace. Where did my princess go? Uh, she was uh, called to the house for a moment. Uh, Toto, if you were trying to set the stage for a romance, how would you do it? Well, music. Always soft music. The language of love. This is what we do in Naples. You make love to a beautiful woman, and in the distance, the straight singer helps to tell her what is in your heart. Toto... A very dear friend of mine is trying to be romantic at the moment and needs help like that. Let me hear how it would sound. Always happy to help a romance. Mm -hmm.
in my arms again. Listen, Your Highness, that Neapolitan love song of yours is echoing through the entire forest. That is my wife. Yes, isn't it romantic? Keep singing, Toto. Keep singing. When shall I again caress you? second act of Princess Pat in just a moment. But first, the other day, Jim Berryman, well-known cartoonist of the Washington, D.C. star, was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for the Outstanding Cartoon of the Year. Although stories about Mr. Berryman appeared in newspapers everywhere, few people learned that the first picture he drew, at five years of age, was of a locomotive pulling a freight car. Today, he still is an ardent railroad fan. The Berryman family has an extensive model railroad system, and when they travel, they look forward to going by train. Each time, they try to take a different, well-known train, and there are few famous-named trains with which they are not intimately familiar. Mr. Berryman is but one of hundreds of thousands of persons, including many leaders in business, the professions, and the arts, whose hobby is railroading. Throughout the country, there are rail fans who build and maintain model railroads, who collect both historical and modern railroad objects of almost every kind, and who take trips by rail just for the pure pleasure of going places on trains. But whether or not you are a rail fan, you will enjoy traveling by train. Since the end of the war, the railroads have installed enough new passenger cars to make up nearly 400 new trains. They represent the latest in today's styling, appointments, and invention. Cars are spacious, well-lighted, have comfortable seats, large and well-equipped lounges, and hundreds of other improvements to make every mile of your trip more pleasant. Yes, the person who travels by rail has unsurpassed comfort, convenience, dependability, and safety. Extras, which mean so much, whether the trip is to the next city or across the continent. This is another reason why the railway is the best way to travel. Here is Act Two of Victor Herbert's The Princess Pat, starring Gordon McRae and his two lovely guests, Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. You hear that? She's my wife. She's out there in the forest with another man. Well, it serves me right. I thought it would be fun to be an island in an ocean of girls. And I turned out to be a mud skull. Because, you see, my beautiful princess, Patricia, with her lovely laughing eyes, was using those eyes to flirt with old man Schmaltz. <laughs> see? Oh, princess, you are fascinating. How do you do it? Every time you flash your eyes at me, it's like electricity. Then I'll flash them once again. I am electrocuted. Whether young man or old man, or timid or bold man, there's one thing he cannot resist. Is the glance of your eyes, which he takes to his soul. So perhaps you would like to be killed. And so great his conceit is, your conquest complete is, 
He's in for an awful surprise. When he finds to the shame of him, you have seen me. Princess. But, Mr. Schmaltz, remember, I have a husband. Forget about him. Married men never make good husbands. <laughs> Kiss me. No, please, not so fast. Aramia, Aramia, where are you? Quick, kiss me. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. This is typical of a woman, all right. What is going on here? Oh, the husband. Oh, hello, Toto. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Schmaltz. He's in goose grease. Mm, I'll make goose grease out of him. Toto, don't do anything. If you just step over this way, Mr. Schmaltz, we'll arrange the details of the duel. <laughs> a duel? Ach, every time I take a woman's hand, I put my foot in it. <laughs> now, you just tell me what weapons you prefer. Pistols, rapiers, swords? I or... prefer chicken for that. <laughs> it's such a mess. How did I get into that? Great. Great, yes, sir. It's working. He's so jealous he's challenged Mr. Schmaltz to a duel. Oh, that's awful. No, it's wonderful. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Oh, me, what will the future be? Let us meet the standard dream to love. Life we know should be an everyday one. Surely to be fine and ever be. of your affection isn't even man enough to stand up in a duel. Oh? He ran off. He said to tell Grace he'd never see her again. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. He's taking his Upper Bavarian chicken fat business back to Upper Bavaria. And he leaves his son to you with his blessing. You see, Grace? I told you everything would work out. But what about us? Don't you love me, Toto? I'm afraid it's too late. Oh! For you, oh, for you, life 
fast become but pain. Shall the heart ever do under the ball of what in the rain? to make to you. Oh, what is it? I was only flirting with that man to make you jealous. Oh. I didn't like the idea of your being in an ocean of girls. I felt like a wet rock. Well, I promise never to look at an ocean again. And how about you, Grace? Oh, I'm off to find Tony, the chicken fat prince. Why, Pat, I'm going to be the princess fat. <laughs> you know... This whole thing ends just like an operetta show. Where love is best of all. Far from life apart. Oh, 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. And right now, we want to thank Sam Hearn, who was such a delightful Mr. Schmaltz. Princess Pat, with book and lyrics by Henry Blossom and music by Victor Herbert, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. When soon you lay away your work for that well-earned vacation... Remember that the best way to start your vacation and end it is on a safe, comfortable train. You start your vacation the minute you get on the train and relax. You have room to stretch out and roam about. Luxurious dining, lounge, and observation cars to visit. And on your return trip, you retain that relaxed, rested, ready-to-tackle-anything feeling. Yes, the railway is the best way to travel. And now here again are Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. Well, thank you, Dorothy and Lucille. It was wonderful to have both of you on board. And you know, Dorothy, next week, uh, Lucy and I start traveling on the summer show train. Sounds like a wonderful trip. I'm all excited about it. Yes, we're going... Oh, I forgot my accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> We're going to take the show train back through the years, stopping each week at one particular year to dramatize the events and sing the songs of that era. We start next week with 1927. Mm-hmm. Our regular crew will be along, too. Carmen Dragon and Norman Luboff. And, Dorothy, we promise you a mighty tuneful summer. Well, it sounds charming. Best of luck and bon voyage to all of you. Well, thank you, Dorothy. And we hope you'll visit us again many times next season when we'll again bring to life the great musicals of our generation. Good night, Gordon and Lucille. I'll be listening to you both all summer. So long, Dorothy. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. The Princess Pat was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae is currently starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical hit, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Gordon McRae is guest editor of a Look magazine feature you will enjoy, Photo Quiz, in the new issue of Look on Newsstands Tomorrow. Dorothy Kirsten appeared through the courtesy of Lucky Strike Light Up Time. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Thomas L. Thomas sings on the voice of Firestone. Hear him on NBC. Mm-hmm.